Welcome to the next lesson for our tutorial series on how to use the Photon Chat plugin. For this video, we're going to be going over some of the code that I've created inside my Photon Chat Manager script. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch more code that I've added to this script, and we're going to break it down over the next couple videos. But first, let's go back to Unity, and I'm going to play through our project. And as we work through the project, we'll then look at the code that makes each mechanic work. All right, so first off, we have the join chat button and the username input field. Now we'll first look at the username input field and this input field has a public function from our photon chat manager script which is called username on value change. And when you select this function you want to make sure that it's under the dynamic string section and not the static parameter. But let's go look at that function. So here I have a public void function which is called username on value change, and it requires a string parameter, which I've called value in. We then have a string variable, which is a serialized field called username. I think in the previous video, it was called user ID, but inside this function, we're setting that username variable equal to the value in parameter. Having this function set to the on value change event of our input field allows us to save whatever the user types into that input field into the username variable. So that takes care of this input field. Now we have the join chat button. This button also has a public function from our photon chat manager script, which is set to the on click event. And this function is called chat connect on click. So let's go look at that function now, which is right here. This is a public void function with no parameters. And one thing that you'll notice about this function is that we have two lines of code from our previous video. We have where we're initializing our chat client variable and where we're connecting to the photon chat server. These two lines of code were in the start function, but the problem with that is that the connect function requires us to have an authentication value for the current user before we connect to the Photon Chat servers. And if we call this function inside the start function, then there's no way for us or the user to dynamically set their username. And so I've taken both of these lines of code and cut them out of the start function and pasted them into this public function which is paired to a later event, such as a button click. Now inside this function, you'll also notice that we have a new variable, which is called isConnected. This is a bool variable, and we're setting it equal to true inside this function. We're then using this variable for an if statement inside our update function, where we're checking to see if isConnected is true before we call chatClient.Service. And the reason why I'm doing this is because since we're no longer calling those two lines of code in our start function, it's possible that we haven't yet connected to the Photon Chat server. And so if we're not connected and we call chatclient.service, will then receive an error. So having this if statement prevents that from happening. From here, let's go back to Unity. And I'm going to now enter in a username for myself. So I'm going to type Nathan. And then I'm going to click Join Chat. Now right there you saw a number of things just happen. The first is that our join chat button and our username input are now disabled in the hierarchy and our chat room objects are now enabled. And so let's go over to the code and see why that happened. So here I have my username on value change function which was executing every time I was typing a new character into our input field. And so currently my username should be equal to Nathan. I then have the chat connect on click function, which was paired to my join chat button. We set the is connected variable equal to true. We initialized our chat client variable, and then we attempted a connection to our photon server. Now this connect function actually has its own callback function for when it's successful, and that is down here. This function is called onConnected and is one of the functions that was added to our script when we implemented the iChat client listener interface. 
So when we make a successful connection to the Photon Chat server, this function will then be executed. Now inside this function, you'll notice that we have a new variable, which is called join chat button, and we're calling the set active function and passing in false. Now the join chat button is a game object variable, which is a serialized field, and you'll need to set this variable in the inspector to be the join chat button from our hierarchy. Now that handles disabling the UI button and the username input field. But as you can see here, we don't have anything that's enabling the chat room objects. But what we have instead is this line of code here where we are subscribing to a specific chat room. So although we've connected to the Photon chat server, we haven't yet subscribed to a chat room or a channel where the conversations are actually happening. We have our chat client variable dot subscribe and the parameter for this function is an array of strings for all the channel names that you wish to subscribe to. So for my example, I just have one channel and so I have new string array and then I only have one value inside the array called region channel. Now one thing to note is that the Photon Chat plugin has a limitation of only being able to connect to one region at a time. Now the subscribe function is another special function that has its own callback function. And that function is down here and it's called on subscribe. And the last thing that we need to do for this video is enable our chat room objects. And I'm doing that within this function. And so I have a new variable called chat panel, and I'm calling the set active function, and I'm passing in true. And so the chat panel variable is another game object variable, which is a serialized field. So once you've done all of that, we can then save this script and then go back to Unity. Inside Unity, you'll want to select the object that has your Photon Chat Manager script attached to it, and you'll need to set the join chat button variable, which I've set to this object, which is my join chat button, but this object also has the username input field as a child. And so when I disable this button, it will also disable the input field. You'll then also need to set the chat panel variable which I've set to this chat room object, which has all of these objects as children. And that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. Now we're still not to the point where we're sending any public or private messages, but we have established a connection to the Photon chat server with the ability of having a dynamic string for the username. We're also maintaining our connection and we're subscribing to a chat channel, all with a working UI. Now if you have any questions about this tutorial you can leave them in the comments below. Also remember that you can reference the code from this tutorial on our website.